good kind, and I want to welcome you here today. From the beginning of time, stories have been mankind's way of looking at his world. While I'm telling the Sword of Truth series, while I'm telling the story of these books, I'm trying to entertain myself. So I want to tell stories that are interesting and keep me interested and fascinated and keep me having fun. Um, so these are my fairy tales that I'm telling myself. The only difference is that in my world, the fairies can make you bleed. Uh, Confessor is the final book of the series, and Confessor has to do with Kaelin, um, Richard's love. The book Confessor that brings to a conclusion the, the whole series, in essence, is Kaelin finding out who she is in this world. The storyline is that she has lost her memory of who she is, so it, it strikes at the heart of what we think of ourselves and how we think of our world around us. And she has to rediscover her own place in the world and who she is. Part of my thinking about how to approach a series when I began was, I don't want to have a series of cliffhangers because um, it's very frustrating for me when I read books like that. I like to have a conclusion to a story. So each one of the books along the way, I've tried to have a resolution to the conflict within that book. Now there's a larger ongoing conflict within the whole series and the story arc of that whole series is like the story arc of our life. The final three books in the series, Chain Fire, Phantom and Confessor, are a story unto themselves and they're another subplot within this larger context of the universe of the Sword of Truth books. We discover throughout this series how myth is born and in Confessor we come to see the gateway into this larger view of where myth comes from what founds our understanding of myth, how these stories become larger than life, and where they lead mankind. One of the things that's always irritated me about books and movies and, and uh, TV programs is that evil is not just some guy in black robes floating through the room doing evil. When someone's doing evil, they do it out of their sense of what's right. When those people flew the airplanes into the Pentagon and the World Trade Centers, they weren't doing something to do evil. They were doing what they thought was good. So those are the kind of characters that scare me the most, is the characters who are devoted to their philosophy. And that's how the most evil things that mankind has ever done have been hatched out of a sense of doing good. So all of those things together add up to people who start wars because they think it's their duty to reform mankind in their image of how mankind should be. So philosophy drives everything we do. Philosophy drives the good and the bad. And which philosophy we're going to pick as to how we live our lives is the very stuff of stories. People are drawn to books, drawn to movies, drawn to stories because they want to see their values in life reflected. They want to see the things that matter to them. Uh, the same kind of struggles that they're having brought to fruition. They want to see their values triumph. They want to see the things that matter to them work out in the end. Philosophy and storytelling are all one and the same. Throughout time, all storytelling has been philosophy passed down. I just happen to like to deliver my philosophy at Sword Point. The sort of truth world, the, the world that I've written down, has opened up my world to a greater world. It's you know, brought me out of my little room where I'm writing the story to have friends everywhere and have connections with people everywhere. And it's been the greatest experience of my life. And I want to thank you for reading the series and supporting me and recommending it to friends. Um, it's, it's all possible because of you. And, and I appreciate every, each and every one of you, so thank you.